that Jesus did for us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We can come. Um, uh, we have a basket here. We can have offering. We can also be held on.
Good morning. Good morning. Well, who's to say it's a good morning? Well, we're here. We're breathing. Uh, some didn't make it this morning, so we have something to be thankful for. If you think about that, uh, you may be having a bad day, but some people didn't get to experience a bad day with you. Their days are done. So, if we have breath, uh, let's praise the Lord. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise be the Lord. Are there are there any, any testimonies this morning that would like to testify? Uh, I want to just get you more out of this listening to me. Uh, I really enjoy the worship time. Yes, really? It's just been such a blessing to be able to come here. My husband had got called out last night, but the, the devil will come against you whenever you're trying to do something good. And when you have all this people come into this new area, and the only thing that occurred was my bag of past letters from my grandmother and my father. They don't really mean something to me. And I found myself just so angry. And, and then I thought, this is the past I live in. Thank you. 
upon this God. And they're saying, Lord, 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 even the demons were subject to us in your name. And Jesus is walking in. Shh, I saw him fall his leg and come in. Come on. <laughs> Jesus wasn't excited that they found out the devils were subject to them. Because to him, it's always been that way. It's always been that way. It's like if you, you taste a new food and you're all excited and you're trying to tell me how good this restaurant is, but I eat there every Monday or something. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> but you're like, you found it for the first time. You're like, man, this is so good that you've got to try it. Yeah, I eat there every Monday. And so uh, it, it is just exciting work that Jesus does in the heart and life. I want you to turn with me, please. To Mark chapter 3. May I say something? One more yes. thing before you get started, because what, what touched my heart the most last night was when the Lord said, Think big. Think big. In, in speaking to our church and speaking to our group, He said, Think big and don't be discouraged. And uh, that really spoke to my heart. Amen. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here with that. And he was, he was talking directly. He was talking to the whole group, but I remember that was when he came and was talking to you. So, so uh, amen. God is able, and we want to look at this today in Mark chapter, Mark chapter 3. I want to read just six verses. I may read seven, let's see, but six verses. Let's Let's read and, and um, do think big. There are, I am so excited. There are so many people in this area. Another part of the prophecy was you will reap where others have sowed. And there has been, I thought of John and Gladys Haynes. I thought of Francie Christensen. I thought of. He used to teach at your house. Gene oh, Lewis. Gene Lewis. Ben Crandall. I thought of, I thought of, uh, well, I didn't think of him if he was mentioning him. I'm, but there's, these are people that sowed into my life. And as far as they knew, when I left there for the army, I was one of the devil's lieutenants. Okay? As far as they knew. But they had planted seeds. When I got to Germany, uh, there was a pastor over there that reaped where he did not sow. <laughs> he eventually sowed seeds into my life, but the salvation part was something that other people had sowed. And so, um, I'm excited, and guess what? I fully believe Jesus can save anybody, because he saved me. I fully believe Jesus can heal anything and anybody. You know why? Because there have been times where I was definitely ill, didn't know what it was, on and on, and prayer was made, and guess what? I'm still here today. I know God has healed my body. Sometimes I knew it definitely, and sometimes I didn't know what was wrong. It's like killing me, and then come to find out there's nothing going on. One time, even after I, uh, I thought I had a heart attack when I was a missionary in the Philippines, and that was after I got news that my dad had a massive heart attack, and the doctor said that it was probably something that would be hereditary, and all the children should be checked out, and then I'm like, I can't breathe. I, I go get checked out by this doctor. He does a full stress test on me and everything. And I go to the max on the treadmill and all of that. And I sit down and boom, my heart rate's right back to normal. He says, are you a professional athlete? <laughs> it was just the devil messing with me. And God just, whatever was going on. And I'm not a professional athlete. Okay? Maybe a suit, uh, try to be a sumo wrestler. But God touched me. God is a healer. And I love the Lord. Let's get into this message this morning. <laughs> and he entered, this is 
Mark chapter 3, verse number 1. And he entered into the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely. They watched him speaking of Jesus. They knew about the man with the withered hand. He was a regular member of their church. So they watched Jesus and watched him closely, whether he would heal on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. Excuse me, I'm supposed to do this. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Step forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful? So now Jesus is speaking to the people who wanted to accuse him of breaking a custom they had. God had set it in motion, but they didn't understand it. And they were now treating it wrong. There's a lot of religions that they have traces of things that God has set in motion, but a lot of times they don't understand what it really was. So they have like remnants of godliness in what they do, but a lot of times there's not a full understanding of what God meant. So Jesus uh, said to the man, step forward, then he said to them, he looked to the accusers, those people that wanted him dead, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around at them with anger, now look at that, Jesus got angry. Now he didn't curse them, he didn't get angry and run over them, he cursed them and on and on. Anger is a normal emotion that God has put in us. Did you know that? We just let it get out of control when we punch doors and um, probably a whole lot of other things. Anger, that anger, is an emotion that God put in you. It's part of you. But He didn't put it in me so I could get mad at someone that cuts me off on the road. And I come up and bump their bumper and knock them in the ditch and flip their car over. Okay? There's a lot in the Bible about anger, but there's a, a way to be angry at what God is angry at. Here Jesus is angry. And he looked, uh, looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their heart. He said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him or put him to death. But Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea. We've been speaking on the topic, the Jesus way. A lot of times, I was even talking to someone this morning, and I, I told them that we weren't just a certain religion. I met the person for the first time just this morning. I said, no, we're not, we're not like that. I said, I'm not putting that religion down, but what we do, we just open up God's word and find out what God said. Come as you are, come whoever you are. Doesn't matter how you dress, you come. Things like that, things in our life that are uh, askew or out of, out of sorts, God will show us how to put them back together or the way he wants them. Don't worry about it, just come to Jesus. Just come to Jesus. So we've been preaching about the Jesus way. And this morning we want to look at this portion of scripture. Before we start the preaching, I, I want to pray. Let's pray. Father, 
I ask you, ask you that you guide my heart, my mind, and my, my voice this morning. As I open up your word to God, you give us a promise from the book of Isaiah, from the prophet Isaiah. You said your word will not return void, but it will perform that which is sent out to do. Dear God, as we preach this morning, I ask you to touch every heart. Help us, Lord, to draw closer to you. Those, dear God, that um, whatever state they're in, they will listen later, dear God. Lord, I pray those who are not saved, God, that you would save them and set them free from a life of sin and bring them to the Savior. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I say, I say, come as you are. I read this illustration years ago, and it was, I think it was in the 1800s, not that I read it, but that it was, it was written, and there was a man that felt he was so chained up by uh, his addiction to alcohol, his drunkenness, and, and the, he was set in the church service, and people were giving their heart to God, and, and the preacher asked him, won't you come, won't you come to be saved? And he lifted up his hands as though other people could see physical chains, but to him it was like he had physical chains on him. He said, I can't come to Jesus with these chains. And the preacher said, no, you come to Jesus, chains and all, and he'll take care of you. So if you feel you're bound, you feel you're, you're, you're held by something, Come to Jesus, chains and all. Chains and all. It, it doesn't matter to him. He, he can heal it. And another thing I ask those of you that are here, that later, later on, uh, we try to do it the next day, but our internet is so slow where we are. Um, we try to do it today, but sometimes it's the next day before Abby gets the, the Sunday morning message up on YouTube. And then we'll try to share it on Facebook or share links. But if you have someone, if the message touches your heart, I'm not telling you you have to do this, um, but if the message touches your heart and you have a Facebook account or YouTube or whatever, um, yeah, tag your friends in it. Send it to your friends. Say, hey, listen to this message. It touched my heart. You don't, don't have to say, hey, the preacher was talking about you today. You should have been there. This is it. You know, they may not listen to it. If it touches your heart, you send it to your friends. Let's look at this this morning. The Bible says, we're going to go back and just, just uh, draw from this this morning. In verse number one, speaking of Jesus, and he entered the synagogue. Now the synagogue, we could just say, was the Jewish church. I want to show you something. Jesus went to church. Do you ever hear people that maybe you talk to them about, you know, coming and visiting church and all that? They say, uh, no, uh, uh, no. One time I, I knew, knew this lady, she said, she said, I just believe I need to be like Jesus. I can just sit on a rock and, and talk to God. And guess what? You can. But my question to her was, how many times have you just sat on a rock and talked to God? Okay, a lot of people say, Jesus never went to church. He preached in the open. He preached in the, in the fields. He preached on the sea. Yes, he did. But here and many other places, it says he went to church. Jesus went to church, a gathering place. And later on, in, well, it is later on, but it's in the book of Matthew, chronologically later on, Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. I mean, that's Matthew 16 and 16, right in there. Okay, I don't have it written down. Okay, you think about that. The gates of hell prevail. Hell uh, is talking about the hordes of Satan. Uh, uh, Satan brings sickness. He brings disease. He brings division. He brings hatred. He brings murder. He brings adultery. He brings every evil under the sun. 
comes from the horns of hell. It comes from Satan himself and all his little imps. They, 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 they come and they try to uh, infiltrate your mind and mess with you and get you thinking the wrong way and get you to act the wrong way. Okay? Jesus said he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That means win or war or stop. What? God's church. So guess where I want to be? I want to be in a place where the devil can't defeat. <laughs> I'm going to be on a team that is, is undefeated. Now, we may have individual losses and we lose battles, but guess what? Jesus won the war. Yeah. The war is already won, okay? So there's a song that says something like, I, 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 I'm not going to worry about uh, fighting battles in a war that the devil's already lost. <laughs> Jesus went to church. I always remember that people say, well, I don't go to church. I don't believe in church. I don't, I don't go to Jesus said, I will do my church. And Jesus instructed them to meet and come together. And it's about encouraging one another. We need one another. We, we, we need uh, when, when you testify, when I open it up for testify, and you tell me something, a scripture that is on your heart, or you tell me something God did for you, or that, that God touched your heart, that's the person we need to reach. The, these things touch my heart. A lot of people think the preacher doesn't need in, in, in encouragement or strengthen. You strengthen me. Amen? So, I first want to point out Jesus went to church. Verse 2, the Bible says, so they watched him closely. So Jesus came to church, and here are these people that are in church every Sabbath day, and probably you know, other feast days and special prayer times. And Jesus showed up at their church, and they're watching him. They watched him, whether he would heal him, the man with the withered hand, on the Sabbath. Now, what they did, way back, when God gave Moses the law, he told them you should not work on the Sabbath. Okay? Now, of all the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath day is the only one that is not backed up in the New Testament. In fact, in the New Testament, Paul says some men esteem one day above another, other men esteem every day alike. In Christ, Every day is the day to worship God. Every day is, is a, a Sabbath, okay? But God gave them the Sabbath so they would rest, so they wouldn't work their animals every single day of the week. They wouldn't work their servants, hired servants or slaves or whatever they had. God cared about everyone. He said, no, don't work, rest. Do you know God can give you rest? I mean, I got it, I got it, I got it. I guess what? I'm number one guilty. Okay? I think I gotta do everything. Do, 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 do. And I, I'm gonna tell you, I really try to take a Sabbath through the week where I just sit down, I tell my wife, I say, listen, I'll hold, I'll hold Naomi, do whatever I need to help there. But other than keeping the fire going, I don't plan on doing a whole lot. Okay? Because I just wanna, I wanna relax, I wanna sit down. Rejuvenate, yes, I feed the dog, okay? We don't make Max, Max dog. Uh, we don't make Max dog at the fast uh, when I decide I want to rest. But, you know, I, you need to learn to get alone and just let God talk to you. It's a beautiful thing. Have you ever sat in a dark room and just said, God, speak to me? Well, I did that, and I was there 30 seconds, and nothing happened. It didn't happen. So here's this man. Your hands are your strength. You worked for a living back then. This man was only half there. And all the shame and all the... Can you imagine growing up like that? Do you think the kids at school ever said anything? Kids are cruel, aren't they? Uh, yeah. 
kids are absolutely cruel. I was absolutely cruel. If someone had something wrong with them, we teased them all day about it. If they got a crazy haircut or a new haircut or they got glasses, I remember with people with glasses, four eyes, four eyes, four eyes. Guess what I am now? Four eyes, four eyes. Uh, people remember when kids got braces? Oh man, we tease them. Got a grill. It wasn't cool back then to have a grill. Now it's cool, I guess. Okay, to tease them, brace face, uh, pencil teeth. <laughs> kids are cruel. All this man went through. And Jesus said, Sin for them. So now Jesus wants him to stand up and stand forward in a place where they would, they would teach, they would, they would usually sit down and teach, and people would sit down and listen. And Jesus says, Stand forward. Jesus wants to heal us to put us on display. Not in a proud way, not the way of Oscar or any. But, oh, there's a song I love that's called uh, The Trophy of Grace. Beautiful, beautiful song. People who sing it, they, they really got a country twang. <laughs> They're really twangy, but what a song. How much will be a grace. A display of his love. Part of the results from the old red cross. Man. Jesus told him to stand forth. This was a key to the man's healing. One of the man said, no. One of the men said, hey, you're disturbing the, the, the synagogue today. You're disturbing our church. Because he was going to have to, Jesus was going to go on. Jesus was like a traveling missionary, traveling evangelist. He was from town to town. Wasn't in one place permanently for, for a long time. Jesus has been preaching and teaching. Now he comes here. He's going to go on. If I stand with him, when he's gone, I'm going to be around all these piranhas. The man could have said, I'm not standing forth. I'm not coming forward. I'm not doing this. The Bible says the man said, When we have a defect, a handicap, many times we are ashamed of it. We try to hide it. We try to cover it. God is always looking for honesty and sincerity in us. God knows that we're sinful creatures. This came from the fall, came from Adam and Eve. And God, He doesn't accept our excuses. He just wants us to be honest. I want to read something to you that is really, um, it's from Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter number three. Genesis chapter number three, it's in the Garden of Eden, after Adam and Eve sinned. I want to show you something. I'll just start in verse nine. They had already sinned. And the Lord God called to Adam and said, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Now, Adam was never afraid of God before, but Adam and Eve had been talking to the devil, and now they're afraid of their own answer. They're afraid of the one that can heal them. They're afraid of the one that can, can clean up the mess we just made. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? And look what Adam says. Then the man said, The woman you gave me 
to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. So whose fault was it that Adam sinned? It was God's. God said, what have you done? Have you eaten of the tree that I forbid you to eat from? And, and Adam said, that woman you gave me, she gave it to me. You gave her to be with me, and she gave it to me to eat. Adam never said, yes, Lord, that's what I did. He didn't say that. He gave God a, a list of excuses and then God turns to the woman. And the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So God, you made the serpent, and that which you made came in and deceived me. And so God, yes, I did, but it's really your fault, God. You made me this way. What am I saying? They gave God a Bill of, I mean, a whole longer list of excuses. No excuse. No, there was no, I'm sorry. There was no repentance. There was no forgive me, God. Just a list of excuses. And chapter 3 ends this way, verse 23. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Adam and Eve made a big old mess, and they wouldn't just tell God what they did. They gave God excuses. There was no repentance, no I'm sorry. No brokenness, okay? I've, I've preached from there before and I said, when by the time God came down, we should have saw blood all over the garden. And God coming down, what's this mess? What's got this blood all over here? And God, Adam should have said, Lord, we ate from the tree. We listened to that snake, but I took care of him. That thing did. I chopped him up and fed him to the lions. But no. There was no I'm sorry. There, it, was, it was just a list of excuses. When Jesus came to heal the man, he wasn't trying to, he wasn't trying to um, uh, embarrass him. He wasn't trying to, to bust him out. He was just trying to get the man. I mean, what if the man, if the man did, who are you talking to? What are you talking about? I'm okay, you know. I'm okay. I'm fine. And Jesus probably would have just passed on. Because there's other people that needed help. But Jesus wouldn't help them because they, they wouldn't act in faith. They, they wouldn't just ask him and have faith. They, they, they drove him away, the Bible says. So in Genesis, there was, there was no, there was no, please forgive me, no, I'm sorry. All they did was give God excuses. And so they remain the way they are. I give you a scripture in Proverbs 28 and 13. The Bible says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. We won't forsake what we don't confess. Now, this nowhere does the Bible say you have to confess your sins to man. Okay, that that is. I mean, if if I gotta confess my sins to Jack, hey Jack, I messed up again. Go oh, really, well, I messed up quite a bit too. You know, have a good day. I'll be praying for you. Okay, uh, uh, imperfect man going to an imperfect man. You know, we feel sorry for each other. And uh, and yeah, I did that too once in my life. And, uh, okay, no, no, we confess our sins to. Confess our sins to the high priest Jesus Christ that is perfect, sinless, harmless, the Son of God, that can have compassion on us. But sinful Zach can't help sinful Brady in his sins. 
unless he just points me to perfect Jesus. <laughs> and vice versa. I don't want to cover my sin. The man didn't cover his sin. He stood forth. Another scripture, another scripture in the Gospel of John, verses 39 and 41, chapter 9, verse 39 and 41. Jesus said, he's teaching, he said, this is after he healed the blind man. And Jesus said, for judgment I came into the world that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? And Jesus said unto them, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. They, they, they believed they were perfect and Jesus was the messed up one. And Jesus let them know, if you were blind or if you would say, yes Lord, there's something wrong with me, I need your help. He said, your sins can be taken away. But because you're saying you're okay, then your sins remain. First John 1 and 9. First John 1 and 9. The Bible says that we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I give it back to Mark here real quick. We bring this to a close here. Jesus asked him if it was lawful to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill on the Sabbath day. He said, what, you don't do anything on the Sabbath day? Can't you do good on the Sabbath day? They kept silent. They couldn't answer him. They knew they were caught. And when he had looked around about with anger, now this is why Jesus was angry. This is why Jesus was angry at them. Being grieved by the hardness of their hearts. That's what, that's what God God said. When we harden our heart. When we say, no, 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 no. Leave me alone, I'm okay. Leave me alone, I'm okay. I mean, there are people on their third, fourth marriage if you try to help them, talk to them. Leave me alone, I'm okay. There, there, there are people, there are people that we, we've got to just come honest with God. Just be honest with God. God is, come on, when you go to a doctor, Elaine, she's a physical therapist, okay? Sometimes I have some serious, serious neck pain, back pain, and I'm really hurting, and I have to go see her. She says, so what's, what's wrong? And I tell her my foot hurts. Or do, or do I go to a, a medical professional and I sit, sit there and they're talking to me and they say, well, what's wrong? That's for you to find out. We don't do that with our physical body, but we do it with our soul. We, huh? I'm hurt, man, when I thought I had a heart attack. I was like, ah! I prayed, yes, but <laughs> it didn't go away. He took me to the doctor, take me to the hospital, do something, all right? What hurt? Right here, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I was fine. But, you know, a lot of times we hide. A lot of times we cover. If we think we're okay or we make excuses, you know, if if we have something going on in our mind, what about people, a big thing in the world because there's so much, so much, and I, I believe it's a big issue. Abby was just like a Paul walking the halls of the school. She was just like, these kids are cursing. And she was raised in, and she was raised in, in inner city Milwaukee. 
What year did you graduate? 2001? 2002, she graduated in 2002, raised in inner city Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And she was just appalled at all the filthy mouth. Where does this come from? The internet and all this, what they hear. And, and if, if someone, listen, if someone's addicted to pornography, you know what they should say? God, I'm addicted to pornography. God, I need, huh? If someone, if someone is, is overcome with some addiction, okay? And, and, a, and a lot of times, the medical profession, sometimes it's really done us wrong, that they, they make diseases out of things that are not diseases. Like, I understand the, the argument about alcohol, okay? But you know what? I don't think you can call alcoholism uh, a disease, okay? I don't think you can call it a disease, okay? Let's say I got, I got this thing right here. This is full of the bubonic plague. Really? That was a deadly disease I heard about. Kind of real with that. <laughs> if you call alcoholism, if you're struggling with alcoholism, I'm not putting anyone down. I drank like a like a, a fish years ago. And in my family, my, my on the great inside, a lot of alcoholism, a lot of alcohol, a lot of stuff. My, my grandpa died very, very, uh, he shouldn't have died near as, as young as he did. He was only in his early 60s and he died. I drank the scotch whiskey all the time. If, you, if you're struggling with it and you say, well, I have a disease called alcoholism, that's the only disease that we tax. Nowhere else do you go out and, and well, I have a disease. I have, I have a disease called cancer. Well, where do you get it from? Well, I get it from this bottle. Well, what do you do with the bottle? Well, I drink it every day. If you had a bottle called cancer, which is a disease, would you, would you drink the disease every day? And, and, and being here at home, like, I hear more stories of just different, different things. I think he said you. But you gotta stand for me. When you look at drunkenness as a sin instead of a disease, you'll get rid of it and you'll be delivered from it today. You can be delivered. When you look at drugs as instead of an addiction, look at it as a sin. You look, you look at it as a sin, that it's a sin against God, and it's keep me out of heaven, and it will send me to hell. You know what? You drop it like a hot potato. When, when that revelation of whatever, well, I've got this little issue with pornography. You know the Bible says, do not look on someone else's nakedness. The Bible says that. I don't have time to go to all the scriptures. But I've got this little issue with pornography in it. No. And, and you know, I, I know it's bad, but I keep going back. When you look at it as sin, listen, I did four stories. A little girl at five years old, she's an adult, on her second marriage, messed up, mind battle. She's like 30 years old, I'm her pastor, some, a few years ago. And, and she, you know, I, I'm like, what, what's wrong with you? And talk with her. And she began to tell me that she would hide in the back in the back of the room and watch her dad watch pornography and then he would take it out of the recorder, video recorder, whatever it was, and he would and put it in a drawer and he would go to work and she would go get it out of the drawer and watch pornography. Five years old. Five years old. You know what God said? Because she was willing to stand for what she got to me. Are you willing to step forward? I'm not saying step forward right here. I'm, I'm not saying you even have to tell me or someone watching me. I'm not saying you have to call me or personal message me and say, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And, and guess what? If, if, if you're addicted, I'm not putting you down. I've done drugs. If you're an, an alcoholic, I'm not putting you down. I was an alcoholic. I lived to drink. 
I'm not putting anyone down, but I am telling you, all I am is a person that was full of sin, that has been healed by the hand of Almighty God, and I'm telling you, a place you can be healed. That's so good. You know what so good it is? Simple description. So the best description I ever heard, I think, is a beggar who has found bread, who is now out telling other beggars where they can be filled. Jesus is the answer. He can set us free from whatever sin, whatever demon, whatever devil, whatever mindset. He can heal our body. He is the answer for the world today. Jesus told the man, stretch forth thy hand. What he did, he did it. God wants to heal you and put you on display. And so all the world, maybe not, maybe not Africa or India or Brazil or whatever, uh, maybe you'll never go there, but this part of the world, Buttercup, Inchalim, Nesvila, Oman, Keller, the entire reservation where we are, God wants to save you and come and live in your heart so you can be on display and the world can go. Something happened. Because people look at me crazy. We just did a funeral. God bless the camp family. Uh, Judy passed away. Wonderful lady. Also Ron passed away years ago. We were asked to speak at their funeral. And, and uh, one lady... One lady, I saw her for the first time since I've been back, and, and uh, she said, she said, man, you have a lovely family, and she said, if you don't be good, I'm going to tell them what, you, what we used to do, you know, what, <laughs> because she said, I know, I know, I used to be at a party with you, and the other girl, they know, I said, no, they, 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 she knows I was sin, and you know what, God healed me, but people look at me like, you? You. Yeah. God, that's why I have faith. God, I know deep in my soul I, it works. It works. He works. He is a miracle worker. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. Close your eyes. And I'm going to pray. And for just a little while, if it works out. I'm going to play a little song called Jesus is the Answer. Why we just stay and meditate about what was said. If you are in need of special prayer today, any type of healing,